you'll never guess what so-and-so called me up and told me, honey, this bill's due. Oh my goodness, can you won't believe what Atlas did today? Oh, it's your turn, you're taking him. None of that. Welcome back to Humble Homemaking. Today's video is all about how to be a better homemaker for the man in your life. But please don't click away if you don't have a man in your life or if you're still pretty young because some of these things can be applied to living at home with your parents still. And some of these you can just take note and put them in the back of your mind when you do have that man in your life. This coffee recipe is from Cynthia L. I will link her channel down below in the video that she gave this recipe out. But I cannot stop making this coffee. It is just, it's so easy to make and it is so good. And it's not going to break your bank like Starbucks or Big B or Tim Hortons. Well, Tim Hortons is pretty cheap. But it's not going to break your bank and you can make it all at home and you can have as much as you want. So let's get started before I keep gabbing away about my delicious coffee. Keep your house clean. Tidy up for him before he comes home from work. When I used to work and when I would go to work with him, we do own a family business and I used to go to work with him every single day. But when I used to come home and my house would be a mess, I would just walk in and I would be like, oh my gosh, there's stuff everywhere. And it would just stress me out. I don't like walking into a messy home from a long day of work. And I don't believe Cole does either. So. What I try and do is, I know he comes home at a certain time. I spend about a half hour before that speed cleaning my house, making sure everything is put away, making sure Atlas's toys aren't all over the floor, making sure that it smells good in here, and of course, making sure that the kitchen looks clean. Make sure dinner is ready or close to ready for when he comes home from work. Now, sometimes dinner is still in the oven or it's in the crock pot, but I always try and make sure that I have snacks on, on hand for him so that when he comes home hungry, he has something to snack on while dinner is still being finished up. So, so prepping in advance, knowing what you're gonna make for dinner, knowing how long that specific meal that you're making for the night takes will help you to judge when to start dinner so that when he walks in, one of the good smells he's smelling is dinner being cooked. Avoid nagging him right when he walks in the door. Don't start complaining about- You'll never guess what so-and-so called me up and told me. Honey, this girl's you. Oh my goodness, can you won't believe what Atlas did today? Ugh, oh, it's your turn, you're taking it. None of that. Of course, always greet him with a smile and be happy to see him, but don't start laying down the honey-do list right as he walks in the door. Give him some time and space to breathe. I personally try and wait until after dinner to bring up anything like that because a negative conversation can ruin an entire meal and meal time is supposed to be a special time where you sit down with your loved ones and you enjoy that time together. And so I don't like to bring up negative things like that until we've both finished our meals because I'm not trying to ruin his appetite bringing something negative up or bringing up a bunch of bills that are due after he just had a long day of working hard. So remember, let me repeat, so remember a bad conversation during dinner can ruin an entire meal. So don't nag as soon as he walks in and don't nag at the dinner table. Listen to him when he's talking. And I'm not saying this in a like belittle you type of way. I'm saying this in a regular like if he's trying to talk to you and he's trying to tell you about his day, sometimes he needs to get that stress off his chest and you might be the only one that he really confides in and feels okay talking with things about. So please make sure that you're you're listening to him and start out by putting your phone down. So a lot of people have this horrible habit nowadays of pretending they're listening to somebody but they're on their phone and I'm I'm pretty guilty of this but how much are you really receiving when you're look when your attention is also focused on your phone I don't care how great of a multitasker you are nobody is good at multitasking while listening Be and people that are important to you deserve your 100% attention not your 50/50 attention not your 70/30 attention 
They need your 100% attention. The least you can do is put your phone down for five minutes and listen and then pick up your phone when he's, when he's done talking. And who knows where the conversation might go. You might realize that you have something that you want to get off of your chest and that you want to talk about. So put your phone down and listen and be kind to him. I had the most horrible attitude with Cole when I was pregnant with Atlas and when Atlas was first born and he didn't do anything wrong I just had this bad attitude and part of it was hormones sure because I let my emotions get the best of me and I let my emotions rule or I would create these scenarios in my head of what if he's doing this well why would I be super nice to him if he might be doing this like <sighs> as women with this reputation and sometimes we start we actually brag about it that attitude that negative condescending attitude that we have towards men that needs to stop I was always in denial about my attitude I was always in denial about my rolling my eyes and just being really snarky it took him having the backbone to call me out on it and point these out these things out to me like wow it's hurting his feelings with me treating him like this and I must, I really do have a tone. Why do I have this tone? And it really made me conscious of how I was asking him things after that. So instead of being like, you know what, my porch really needs to be cleared off and I'm so tired of you putting things on the, on the front porch and leaving it there. Be, instead being like, you know, it would look so nice if the porch was cleared off. Do you think this weekend when we get time, we can help, we can clear off the porch together? See how different that is? <laughs> and so everything I was doing, everything I was doing and everything I was asking him was in was really negative and I was really mean to him. And, and I'm just so thankful that he didn't just go, Oh, I, this is just too much to deal with. This is not worth it. Why? You can have that attitude with somebody else. I'm so thankful that he had the backbone to call me out on that stuff. That made such a huge change with how I've treated him. If you have children together, which we have one child together, be on the same team. Don't be against each other. Don't be team mom, team dad. Team mom lets him get away with this. Team dad lets him get away with that. Team mom is more strict. Team dad is more strict. Don't do that. Be on the same team. And never let your child know that you two are having a disagreement with parenting. Especially when they reach that age where they understand. Be on the same page together because it just makes, it makes your parenting that much easier. and makes your child take you seriously. And it lets them know that they can't get away with certain things with certain parents. Because you are on the same team. So there is no well, I'm gonna go ask dad because blah, 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 blah. And obviously Atlas is still young, but we are hoping that this one thing that we're trying to nail now, hopefully that will benefit in the future. Stop airing out your dirty laundry to everyone on the internet. And you know what? Even your clean laundry too. Now in the world of the internet realm, you want people to relate to you and you want people to, to make you feel better and temporary gratification that everything is going to be okay so you tell people on the internet about your about your problems that you're having in your relationship or a fight that you and your husband might have had but don't do that don't badmouth your husband on the internet don't badmouth your relationship on the internet no matter how much you talk to them in your DMs they are strangers to you even if you know everybody in your friends list not everybody needs to know these things about your relationship so stop airing out your dirty laundry and keep that stuff private. The best relationships are the ones that are kept private. I like to talk about my life and mention things about my life, but I'm not gonna tell you every single little detail about my relationship. And I feel like that's how it should be. I don't think we should be all out in the open on the internet for the sake of people liking us and for the sake of people relating to us. I feel like people can relate to us in other ways other than telling them every little thing and what if your husband goes through and reads something about that and he he feels uncomfortable because you told some you told a bunch of people on the internet things that he didn't even get a chance to work out with you you know so back off on the airing out your dirty laundry okay pray for him pray for him when he's leaving for work in the morning that he gets to work safely Pray for him while he's at work, for him to have a good day and to have good sales or whatever he does for a living. Pray for him when he's on his way home that he arrives safely and in a good mood. Pray for him when, he's, when you notice that he's struggling with something and 
you can't help him. Maybe God can. If there's anybody that you should be airing out that dirty laundry like I talked about in number seven to, it is God. Talk to God about everything, about your problems. Air out all of your laundry, dirty and clean to God, okay? Because God is always listening and God wants you to pray for the man in your life. God wants you to talk to him and have a relationship with him. He wants to be the center of your relationship. Pray for your boyfriend or your husband or your future husband. If you have not yet met that man yet, pray for him. That is all for the video today on how to be a better homemaker for the man in your life. If you have any other video topics you'd like me to touch on, please let me know below. I will happily consider them. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day and a beautiful weekend. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.